Hi, and welcome to the second part of a three-part tutorial on how I got this shot. For this video, I will be showing you how I edit shots in Lightroom. If you haven't seen part one of the series, please watch that first so you can get an idea of how I shot these images. I have a card linked to it here and in the description below. Also, please subscribe and hit the notification button to get notified on when I post the last video of this series. So without further ado, let's get into Lightroom. Okay, now I've just opened uh, Lightroom and first of all, let's uh, get all the photos into Lightroom and I've already created a project. So what you want to do in Lightroom, um, at the moment I've got Lightroom Creative Cloud um, Classic. You go to library at the top here, click on the folders side and then add folder. And as you can see, I always I always create a folder called raw and that's where I actually put all the raw photos. And okay, now let's import all this raw. You don't have to collect, click all of these. You just have to just click on the folder. You choose it. Uh, once it's chosen, um, it will start showing you display of all the photos um, down here. Now, all you need to do is um, pretty much at the bottom right here, press import. So what that's going to do is going to start importing all your photos um, into your library. Um, now all you need to do next is go to the develop tab at the top here. So now let that load. So everything's loading right now. Okay, cool. So if you're not familiar with Lightroom, um, there are plenty of tutorials out on YouTube and they will tell you how to do it. This uh, tutorial is not, is not really going to show you how to do, how to use Lightroom. So basically, you're coming into this with knowledge of how to use Lightroom. So uh, basically, I'll just show you my workflow and how I do it, how I do things, how I import photos, and how I edit photos. Uh, this is my way. I'm not saying it's the right way, but but it's it's a process and a method that I've been um, using a lot. Okay, so. Here, as you can see here is um, all the photos that you can see on the bottom timeline and over here is all the um, uh, settings as you can see there's a lot of photos so now I'm gonna do is pretty much locate I mean go through all of them and sh um, choose which ones I think is potentially good to use Alright, so in Lightroom, um, there's this good uh, feature where it's where it's uh, has a quick selection, a quick collection, quick collection. So all you need to do is click on this little arrow here, the, the name, and then click on quick collection. At the moment, when I click there, there's nothing because I haven't um, activated any images to be in the quick collection. So if I go back there and I put all photos, these all photos that I've imported. Um, I will quickly scroll through to what I feel that I am I may edit um, and how how to add photos into quick collection is uh, may, maybe this shot for example okay so when you hover your mouse uh, on one of the photos you see this little circle here on the top right corner um, when you click that that adds it to the quick collection so if I click that once it adds this little box here little icon so that tells you that it's selected and it's added to quick collections. So then if I go to this arrow here, all I need to do is go quick collections and then there we go. We see it, it's in part of quick collections. So essentially the photos that I feel is potential that I'll edit and then um, recompose and you know manipulate in Photoshop, I will add it to this quick collections. Um, but let's do that now. I'll go back to all photos and quick collections. So. Um, so let me go ahead and start finding images for the quick collections. Everybody knows that I'm breaking down. Everybody knows I ain't faking now. Everybody knows my heart's faking now. Yeah, she hates me now. I made mistakes, but now I don't ever want to be alone. I don't really ever. Okay, so, so with this image here, it's okay. I don't mind the leg, um, the, the positions of the leg here. But the thing is, she's looking at the camera as well as. She's not really dead center, and I kind of want her to be somewhere in the center. Uh, for now, that's what I feel like I need her to be in. 
Um, so I probably won't select this because anyway, she's looking at the camera. No, about to blow back up. I won't ever let the doubt creep in. Gotta pop a couple more aspirin. I don't think I'll ever let you win. Easier to break it off as friends. I don't really understand myself. I don't really understand. Okay, so I'm gonna try to go um, through the actual background and the people walking by. So this is the other text that I'm, I'm doing with the blurred motion. Um, this is what I want to capture. So I'm going to be selective into the in the shots that I want within this image. Then I can, you know, superimpose all these different images together. Um, I think um, I'll be selective and, um, you know, I'll choose which one I feel is great for composition wise. Um, so let's go through them now. This one might be okay by itself, so um, that person, so I'll just select that person. Okay, now I've selected all the shots that I feel I could use for Yuki shots and also I've selected the shots that I feel I could use for the foreground and background motion blur shots and so if I click here and I go to quick collection um, you can find all of the shots that I chose out of all those shots um, so here it's like 24 photos in total out of 341 photos that I took so let's go back to the 24 photos and here you can see um, these are the potential shots that I feel I could use. Um, like, I don't mind these ones, but is it too much? I'm not too sure. Um, but if you keep clicking, so I can see, now you can see all these um, motion blur shots. I'm trying to, I'm trying to select the shots that's kind of sporadic around the photos. So left. Uh, the foreground to the background to the left to the right side of the picture um, Yeah, just trying to f figure out which which uh, motion blur photos are good for the composition Essentially, I just want to keep uh, Yuki somewhere in the middle most likely in the middle But if I feel like there's a better shot, that's just off middle. Um, that's fine, too but most likely I just want to keep her kind of in the middle because the whole background is kind of symmetrical, um, well it is symmetrical, the, the bridge, under the bridge, so I feel like it's kind of cool that we kind of maintain that middle of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is going to start my editing process here in Lightroom. Um, so I think I will, I will use this image here, I think this will be the main, main subject for Yuki. Um, I think her posture, her you know where her feet is, where her legs is, and her arms. I think it's okay. Um, it's probably this back arm is not that great, so I may mix that with with this. Maybe one of these images. Maybe I'll use this back arm here for for that back arm shot for this one in replacement. So. What I have to do is Photoshop that out and then place the other one in. But I'll show you that when I get into Photoshop. So what I'll do now is um, I'll just start um, editing this photo. Um, so at the moment when I w when it was shot, I think it were, I did shoot it just a little bit underexposed. Um, but I still can bring out the shadows here in post. Um, so I think um, I did auto white balance as well. So I think let's just let's just start doing the process now um, and this is what I do uh, so basically on the far right here um, I would actually go to lens correction straight away and it detects my um, lens uh, Sony I use the 24 to 70 um, G master lens and as you could see I shot it at um, 1 800th of a second to, to get that stop motion um, and at f5 at iso 1000 um i think the actual zoom length was uh 38 as you can see here 38 okay so 
Now let's go here, let's remove, I uh, always click here, remove chromatic aberration. I mean, you may see a bit of them over here, but um, if you don't know what chromatic aberration is, it's it's almost the kind of ghosting of, of the edges. Um, but usually you can find them in um, the trees and you know the edges of stuff but this looks okay but I always click that anyway um, so that's fixed um, so then I go to detail and I remove the because by default um, Lightroom adds this 40 um, sharpening so I'm gonna remove all the sharpening first um, maybe okay let's just add um, 10 sharpening and for the luminance this will give it um, a bit of a softer look uh, I do 20 so I think that's a good good um, good number uh, that's what I usually do there so now I go to um, the basic tab here and what I do is I bump exposure straight away so let's bump it up um, I keep going to that's like one full stop um, I think 1.6 so if you take note here um, you see that this blue um, uh, triangle here if I keep pushing up here in exposure um, I wait till I actually see it white here and to me that tells me it's um it's a good exposure so as you can see here um, you can actually see a lot of more of the detail here now um, so I think 150 is good, 1.5 exposure. Um, now what I do next is I um, up the contrast a bit by two, just to give it a bit more contrast. And then I go down to highlights. Now I wanna bring highlights down a bit because as you can see here, the, um, the sky is like blown out. So um, if I bring these highlights back, to maybe 100, negative 100. See how you can see, you can see um, more of the detail now. And let me crank up the exposure just a bit more. Okay, that's not too bad. Okay, 1.90. Uh, okay, shadows. I think shadows are fine. I don't really need to bump up the shadows. If I bump it up, I, I think it's too much detail. Uh, I kind of like the dark, dark look in here. So let's let's keep shadows as is for now. And then I bump for the whites. Um, I just bring it minus as a little bit just to see a bit more of the um, background. And then for the blacks, um, I'll keep it to the black. For clarity, if I go up plus 10, maybe yeah i think maybe it's too much okay um let's let's do dehaze plus 10 plus 20 okay plus 10 is okay and then if i give it a bit of vibrance plus 20 then negative 10 on the saturation so if you click on the um, backslash um, on your keyboard, um, you can see the before and after. So that's the before and that's the after, before, after. Um, okay, so now that's what I do here. So what you usually like to do in the histogram is you, you kind of want to make all of this, these waves right in the middle somewhere. Of course, it won't always be perfect in the middle, but um, that's where you want to try to aim for. So let's go to exposure again and maybe crank it up just a little bit more. Maybe that's too much. Okay, that's okay. Um, that's all right. So we'll keep it to two stops and, um, now for this color temperature, let's have a look. Um, am I okay with this? I mean, let's go, at the moment it's as shot. So if I click on auto, let's see what the auto does. So auto 
kind of yeah really makes it um more warmer but more kind of red in there so if i go daylight okay not that great cloudy it was a bit cloudy that day as well so maybe this cloudy work nah it's it, it ends up being too warm so the thing that's the thing i don't really want it to be too warm i actually i'll do as shot um and i like i like to give it a bit more of a cooler color for this feel i i feel like i want it to be more on the blue side um so here's your color color temperature this is where you adjust the white balance so at the moment it's um 5050 so if i hold shift and press down arrow it goes down to four okay that's maybe it's too much blue so if i keep going down more okay maybe too much blue let's say i don't mind this okay let's just say let's stick with uh 4850 as a color temperature okay so i'm i'm good with this um so that's the basic um and then i don't use tone curves uh, that much because i usually do that in photoshop so then i actually go to the color here and um i go to i'm just looking at her her skin tone here i mean i think it may be a bit too pink for me so maybe if i um, play i usually play around with these color um, options here so maybe this um, magenta so if i bring the saturation down on this magenta see what that that gives me um, maybe that does nothing okay that do anything okay so maybe a bit of red maybe put down the saturation on the red a little bit so let's go drastic okay let's put it back okay so if i put the red all the way down the saturation you, you kind of lose the red on her lips and that's not good so we'll make her look a bit like zombie like so and that's not what we want so if i just gradually just put it down just tad maybe negative 16 is fine for me yeah that works for me okay cool now um I'm, I'm okay with this color um i'm okay with this so usually i would probably tweak this in photoshop anyway so um if i look around everywhere on the edges i think they're quite good um look everywhere in the edges there so as you can see i shot it at f5 and the reason why i did it at f5 is so i can see more of the background as well so i don't really want the background to be completely blurred out so um this is good i think i'm happy with it so if i click on the backslash again on the keyboard to see the before and after um look at that so so it totally brings out the the um, shadows and the dynamic range on the a7r3 is just amazing and the length grouped with the you know paired with the 2470 2.8 gm lens as well of course it's it's going to be a no-brainer it's going to be good um and as you can see you can see how much detail i could pull that even though i, I did underexpose it just a bit and you know by um by default you should underexpose your your shots in photography uh, just a tad you know because lightroom can just help bring bring all that detail back in post especially you know with the a7r3 with a massive uh, 42 megapixels uh, there's plenty of um, detail to play with okay cool now the last thing i actually do is um you if you look at the horizon and you look at the you know the horizontal lines it's not completely horizontal so let's fix that up and how do i fix that up you actually go to um transform here and this transform helps you see if you hover over this you can start seeing um uh horizontal and vertical lines so if this vertical this starts to adjust the vertical of um the actual picture so if i hold space and press up twice on the keyboard see or down 
it adjusts that vertical kind of um, yeah to, to get like straight lines to get straight vertical lines um, okay so if let's just go down by three for a bit now I can see that the horizontals aren't that you know straight so what I'll do is I'll go to the rotate and curve that just a little bit so by pressing down once twice and here you can just just follow so that's a negative one just look at the lines you know just follow these lines and what you want to do is click on this constrain crop because what that does it will it will crop this whole image um, to where you actually see an image because what the minute I did that vertical it, it started showing a bit of white so if I click on this it will crop it so which is a good good feature so this kind of looks straight now which is a good thing um, you have a look at this line here it's, it's straight in as well as this horizontal a little bit straight so let me just try adjust that more maybe kind of feel like it's off a bit um, okay let's click out of that so that's at negative 0 0.2 0 0.2 okay um, I think I'm happy with this now I'll apply this setting to all of these other settings of where Yuki is jumping um, the reason being is because you know when I want to manipulate or want to cut some certain areas off of another photo and, and superimpose it into this image um, you you want them to have the same color and you know same kind of crop okay so how do I do that so what what I do is on your keyboard you press command C this is on a Mac so it's command C I think on a PC it's shift um, shift alt c i think something like that um but on a mac command c so it gives you up this um this pop-up window and what you do is um you pretty much select everything um and given that i did use the transform tool here uh to rotate the image i really need to click this as well and uh crop yes let's add the crop as well this adds all the the settings that you you you've just done to this image so if I press copy this and then um, just say for example I actually wanted to grab yeah this this hand here so I would probably want to paste it so uh, command V in a Mac and shift alt V on a PC I think alt um, so command V on a Mac so now if you let that process see yeah, cool so now what that does is it applied every single um attributes that you've done to this image here to this image if i want to remove this i think this image here will be great because see this part here this is where the other arm was so all i need to do is pretty much use this part in and then put it into Photoshop and it should be able to replace it um, so let's apply that same kind of those attributes to this image as what I did to this one yeah so that's again copy uh, command C on a Mac um, it's select everything copy and then I will go and um, click on that image and command V paste now if you don't know how to do that just uh, quickly google it and you'll find out um, okay cool so I think the exposure and everything of these images seem to be just right I like it so now I've got three images to play with and to to use um, for the final product uh, but I, this would be the main this is the winner for the um, the hero shot uh, quick tip um, if we if you select these images that I've chosen um, shift uh, left click and if you right click here um, you can actually set colors to them so I'm gonna set a color for Yuki uh, maybe all maybe 
all yellow okay for example all yellow so if I click out of it you see that it ends up being this kind of yellow color but it looks a bit more green to me but anyway that that at least tells me visually that they're the shots that I like okay cool so that's done now what I'm gonna do now is try select the shots for the background and um, the foreground and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna export all of these shots so at least I can have something you know to choose from at the end when I start composing them together all right so let's just choose one image um, okay so let's just choose this okay so what I'm gonna do to choose this is I'm gonna start from what I had here first from Yuki so like like I said before I'm going to um, copy command C and this copies all of the attributes so if I copy this given that you know this is shot as a with a faster um, you know shutter speed in comparison to the slower shutter speed it wouldn't look exactly the same but at least this is a good start for me to you know to to go from okay so let's just try use this for example okay so if I paste command V um, hopefully okay I'm hoping it kind of looks the same so if I look at this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this as a reference so if I click on here alright so this is the reference photo and I'll see this okay correct so if I just hide this click this on the side hide it okay cool now you can see the colors um it's quite close you know I think this is probably a little bit um, more warmer in comparison to this is a bit more uh, cooler and it's probably a bit brighter so let's make this a bit more warmer I guess and less uh, less brighter so let's let's um, add let's go to the basics here and then if we go to the color temperature if we just up arrow once two three okay let's shift up okay that's probably too much shift down then up again maybe five okay great five thousand one hundred and then maybe um, highlights maybe bring bring whites down a little bit okay probably have shadows down a little bit okay it looks like it's getting close to it what if I give it a little bit more of a dehaze? Okay, almost there, almost. I think that's pretty close to be honest. Um, let's do plus 25, okay? Plus 25 is good. So now let's have a look. So if I zoom in. Zoom in. Great. Zoom in. Okay. So that's pretty good. It's pretty close. You know, ignore this sky because I'll probably use this main image as a sky. It's, it's literally I'm only getting um. Uh, I think the color is quite nice already. Let's zoom out of that. Zoom out of that. I think I'm happy with this. Maybe it's a little bit too warm, so let's go back down a bit. And I think that's the sweet spot, guys. Okay, that's it. That's done. Okay, great. 
um, let's use this okay so I'll click this and I'll click this okay so now we know that this is good this is what I want um, let's copy this with the crop with everything copy and now select so what you want to do is um, click on one of these and hold command on the Mac and then click on the rest right click develop settings and paste settings you can't you can't just uh, command V on this unfortunately because it will only just do one image that you've just selected okay this is this has got some okay I thought there's some weird red artifacts but it's just loading yeah I'm quite happy with this, it's good yeah as you can see this um the shadows uh, from the sun you know because obviously I took it within maybe an hour of that I think we shot this within an hour so you could probably see a bit of the sun moving and especially it was overcast as well so you you would see sun you would see the sun you wouldn't see the sun at times because it's covered by the clouds okay that's cool um now let's apply on the other ones back here so again the same and then maybe shift all of that right click develop settings and paste settings okay all right great now let's see yeah right this should be plenty for me to choose from all right I think I should be happy with that yeah mm, this ends up being a bit blue just looking at it real quick I think I made it too warm these colors okay I'm gonna have to fix that again okay let me just um, see if we can just fix this so what I'm gonna do is highlight all of these and bring this uh, temperature down a little bit Okay, to give it a bit more of that blue okay so 4850 right let me see if that changed everything or just that one okay cool it did change it all which is good all right great okay so uh, let's have a look at that let's do a comparison yeah this is good yeah that's a bit more bluer now okay this is a bit warm so now I will need to change these ones so if I click on these guys and then go back to temperature 4850 and then that should change it all all right great so what i'll do now is i'll export these so i'm pretty much done in lightroom right now so um what i'll do is again i'll highlight all of these and i will color code them just you know visually i could see that 
it's um, they're the ones I've selected okay great so um, let's export all of this so if I highlight just till here and then hold command to unselect the ones I didn't have um, color code so what you want to do when you want to export this is you want to right click and you want to export now you'll be presented with this pop-up and I go here to choose and what I'll do is I go to um, to the folder what I've created how I got this shot okay I'm gonna I usually create a folder called um, large files large files okay so these are my exported files okay so I'll choose that and as for settings um, it's usually by default um, it's usually what it is 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 what I set it to um, 72 image sizing mm. yeah 72 is alright not 300 dpi because it's such a large file that um, I don't really need to make it 300 dpi okay so I think that's fine um, find the location export and let that export if you try to shake me, I'll be damned. Planet on the ground is where I stand. Never give up, that was always the plan. It's so cold yeah. outside. I'm alone, I'm alright. It's so cold outside. I'm alone.